Good morning, or good afternoon, good evening, rather. <laughs> good evening, everyone. Today is Sunday, and it's time for Sunday service. So as you guys come on in, um, just go ahead and share the video to your page so others can tune in as well. Tag people in the comment section below. and invite a brother or sister to hear the word of the Lord today. I am Minister Devon, and I have with me Apostle Alberry. Apostle Alberry, Amen. This is one body in Christ and love. We're just listening to um, order my steps um, to start off the service. So just incline your ear to what the song is saying. Prepare your hearts and your minds to hear and to receive the word of God today.
Amen. 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 So we just listened to the gospel music, Worship of America, um, Women of Worship song. It's called Lord Order My Steps. Uh, we do not own the rights to that song, by the way. FYI. <laughs> you just want to throw that out there. But order my steps in your word, O oh Lord. That is all of our prayer. So again, as we mentioned, today is Sunday, August 23rd, and this is Sunday service. Hope you enjoyed that um, time of praise and worship and meditation right before we got into the Word. Amen. 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 I like, um, I thought that that song kind of uh, was released in my spirit today. I sent it out to some people that I pray was a blessing to them. But I, I love the part where it says, order my steps my in your spirit. word. It didn't just say order my steps. It says, order my steps um, in your word, dear Lord. In the word, in the word, in the word. In the word. In the word. <laughs> and since we're in that time where we're talking about the word and, and we're talking about the application of the word, you know, we're talking about faith um, without works is dead. Talking about understanding that we, you know, we. it's interesting that during this time, even before the pandemic and everything, everybody's receiving the word, receiving the word, we receiving the word, we receiving the word. But in a time of adversity and conflict, in a time where, um, where there is a lot going on, you know, um, you know, social injustice and all these different issues, um, and I like to say all these issues that are um, revealing, you know, darkness and anger and bitterness, and it's time for the rising of the suns. It's time for those, you know, I like it, the rising of the suns, not the S-U-N, the S-O-N's, you know, the suns to rise up. You know, when the sun rise up, it's a new day. When the S-U-N rise up, it's a new day, but the, the sun is taking the place of darkness. And when the S-O-N's rise up, it's going to take the place of darkness also. And it's time for the, um, but for the suns to now take what's been pulled in them. Even Paul, you know, Paul, what was three years, right? Paul had three years after he encountered Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And he was being taught by the Holy Spirit. He was not taught by man, but taught by the Holy Spirit. But when Paul was ushered out, it was time for him to now be sent to the Gentile. It was time for him. It was application time to show what was poured in him. And to me, what's amazing is that that during this time of all this adversity, and I, I heard something on the, oh, this was funny. Mm -hmm. I heard them ask the president, one of the candidates uh, who's running for president, do you think when, if you win and you come to office, 
that you're going to be able to change um, the pandemic. Mm. I thought that was funny. I'm just being funny. I thought that was funny that they asked the man, um, I don't care if Donald Trump win a second, uh, uh, a second yeah. term or Biden win a first term. For humanity to be looking to man for the answer, that's funny. And they actually asked this to Biden. They asked him, you know, when you come in, are you going to be like the answer to COVID-19? You know what? And that's funny because what Biden going to do is the same thing that Donald Trump doing. He going to say, wear a mask. <laughs> he going to say, wear a mask. Stay social distancing. He is not the answer to no virus. He doesn't have no cure to no virus. And But it's amazing how people will gravitate to man to change their situation instead of look to the Lord to order their steps. Mm -hmm. Look to the Lord to be... To, to move them in a direction. Look to the Lord for the answer. And that's why I believe Israel, Israel has more wisdom. The children of Israel had more, have more wisdom than the children of today. And the reason I say that, because the children of Israel, when they would see situations and circumstances begin to bombard them or begin to, you know, uh, uh, they found themselves even dealing with the elements of life. They would rip their clothes, they would put ashes, in, and they would cry out to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In other words, they would understand that if there was going to be something that was going to change this, if there was going to be something that was going to cause things to be different, it was it was going to be humbling them, themselves to God and seeking his face. And, and I, I want to call this um, seeking God's face because I was just even talking to one of my spiritual daughters um, and and going into the ninth month, you know, I like the ninth month, that month of birth, that one body, I'm talking about one body, I hope many of you all will join us. We're going to um, do a consecration for the whole month. Um, just And the consecration, the theme to that consecration is going to be called seeking his face, you know, seeking your face. Lord, seeking your face. But I want to start on it because seeking the face of God is putting yourself in an atmosphere in which now you receive, but it's not even receiving, but also putting yourself in an atmosphere where you have the answer to be doing, mm -hmm. to, to have the answer to be doing, to be applying the word of God. So I, I want to, so even today I'm going to talk about uh, seeking your face, but I want, but who face are we seeking? Because when you look, when you see men seeking men's face for the answer, what do you think about that? When we seek man's face for the answer, man doesn't always have the answer, especially if God hasn't given him the wisdom to come up with the yes. solution. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, and I pray that even as the, the sons, that's why I said sons and daughters too, because they're, they're the church that should have the revelation to be able to see, to discern things, should know, okay, God, you have gotten our attention. Mm -hmm. Um, let us turn to you. Let us fast. Let us seek your face. Let us begin to seek the answer for what's going on because um, that we want people to be prepared for that day when you come. Mm -hmm. We don't want to. When souls are being lost by the thousands, come on now. When mm -hmm. souls are being lost by the thousands, those who know the truth and walk in the truth must move with an urgency. Mm -hmm. When souls are being lost, when people are dying by the thousands, and they're saying it's over 100,000, 150,000 souls that are The question to the sons and daughters who know truth, out of the 150,000 souls that have been lost, were those souls, because death is not the issue to those mm -hmm. sons and daughters who are walking in the mm -hmm. spirit. Right. It is, are they, were they in a position mm -hmm. to walk into eternal mm -hmm. life? See, when death, when, when, when there is a situation where death is taking over and people are dying by the thousands, then that's an urgency for the sons and daughters who understand that death is not the finality. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Understanding that death is, the, that's the person, that death is not the finality. Because if you die not in Christ and you die in your sins, then yes, the sons and daughters who walk in faith, who know the truth, understand that your soul, that you are now, when you die in your sins, if you die not accepting Jesus Christ, then you're going to hell. That's the reality. That's the truth. And the sons and daughters of God know that reality. So there's an urgency of 
rise up and be about their father's business. There's an urgency for them to begin to apply what was poured into them because they understand, man, people are dying by the thousands and yet I have the truth. Let us not hold the truth. Amen. Amen. Let us not withhold the truth. Then the blood is on our hands. If we have the truth, let us hold the truth in a time are dying by the thousands and we understand that they are not dying they're transitioning and if they're transitioning to Christ and they're transitioning to darkness mm -hmm. to eternal damnation for those who know Christ they're transitioning into eternal life and yet we don't understand this revelation we act like well okay it's a plan no it ain't about people dying are there are we are we sound trumpet to allow the you know, without being in Christ, your soul is going to be lost. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's is, that not, is that not? Is that the scripture? That's the scripture. That's the word of God, mm -hmm. and He cannot lie. Amen. When God speaks, He's not a man that shall lie, or the son of man that shall repent. Sure. And I and I talked about this on Thursday. I said this on Thursday. Uh, Hebrews four. I read this. Hebrews four. For unto us, our gospel preached. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Mm. Come on now. The word did not profit them. Hear the gospel, but it is not profiting them because it is not mixed with faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. They're, not, they're, 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 they're not mixed with faith. I want you to understand mixed with faith. Because we understand faith without works is dead. Amen. So when it's not mixed with application, amen, mm -hmm. when you hear, but it's not mixed with the, uh, applying the word, then you can't get a reward from the word. It's, it's a sad thing to be hearing the word without application because application is reward. You know what I'm saying? And take, he gave five, we gave one man five talents. Mm -hmm. One man one, right? Mm -hmm. And he did, did he not expect it to work? He respected an uh, investment. Yeah, he expected it. Yeah, he He came back, he had what? Ten. Ten. The one who came back who gave two, he had what? Yeah, four. Due to profit, when he he's to have more. During the time where many souls are being lost, when many lives are being lost, the rich should be who have the end. See, when you're rich, you got enough. You got more than enough, everyone else. Yeah, like so, come on, you got to over. Come on now. You got enough more than. So, therefore, when we're losing thousands of souls, where are those who are rich in the spirit, telling with the gospel, preaching it to those who are who don't know you, understanding people to have Christ? Amen. Know the urgency of understanding that people should have Christ. Amen? Amen. Now, let's see the importance of the urgency of having Christ because Christ is the word in which we have, but the application of that word and what it may cost us to. Let's go to, we're going to go to Hebrews, uh, about the fifth chapter now. I want you to go to Hebrews 5th chapter. We're going to give you a second to get there. Amen. Amen. We're going to stretch. Look, let me stop playing. Let me stop. Good. Mm -hmm. We're going to get there. Amen. So we're going to start at the Hebrews 5th chapter, the first verse, because we want you to understand that, um, you know, that that the word of God should be profit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, 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 we, and I know that you, we are those who hear and do the word. It is type of application to be sitting back and talking about, oh my God, no, oh, 150,000 people died. 150,000 people, did they die without knowing the truth? Did they die without seeing the glory of God? Did they die without hearing the trumpet, the good news? Because the truth be told, we all going to see the one death. The question is how we all gonna see one death. How man, they're um they're the taking out thousands of people every year. God, the flu is year. We got uh cancer is taking out <laughs> thousands of thousands of people every month. Every so yet we at the church see people dying, but we more excited about getting cars and houses and stuff. We see people leaving without the without the word of God. Mm. 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 And yet we don't perceive there's an urgency for you to be applying that which is in you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's powerful. That's okay. Hey, we're going to start. You got something you want to say? You know, I'm just going to say like um, in the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 3, it says, Blessed 
is the one who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy mm -hmm. and those who apply it, those things which are written for the time is near. Mm -hmm. And so it says, blessed are you mm -hmm. if you read the word yeah. and if you apply the word mm -hmm. because the time is coming. And when you read this word and you're blessed, you're blessed with the truth. You're blessed with the life. Mm -hmm. You're blessed with grace that's going to come for those who hear. Mm -hmm. You're going to be blessed. And the blessings of God makes one rich. It adds that profit. Come on. Yes. It doesn't um, yeah. add sorrow. Come on. So, and it transforms mm -hmm. and changes lives that are introduced to you. Amen. And the atmosphere. You become a light set up on a hill, a light in the house set up on a hill that all in the house may see the light. You become the salt because you have, see, every man is going to see one death. But the question, the sons and daughters got who are rising up, understand that there's an urgency because they don't want you to perish without understanding the good news of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see what that good news is right now. Amen. Amen. Okay. So we're in the book of Hebrew, chapter 5, starting from the first verse. For every high priest mm -hmm. taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God. Oh, we, that's good right there. Mm -hmm. It said, what he said, it said, every high priest taken among men is ordained for men in the things pertaining to God. Um, so he so he's taken from men. Come, taken he's from men. been consecrated yes. or set apart and ordained by who ordained by God it's ordained by God mm -hmm. you need to know if the men of God and the women of God that you are following if they are ordained by God mm -hmm. amen mm -hmm. if they are called ordained by God because if they are not ordained by God they're not going to prepare you for the purpose of God amen when you are what you what ordains you that's what you're gonna prepare for a purpose that's what purpose you're gonna work for mm -hmm. okay amen that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Mm -hmm. He can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. Mm -hmm. Because of this, he is required, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer sacrifices for sins. Yeah. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who was called by God, just as Aaron was. I, th I think this, 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 oh my God, right here, this part right here mm -hmm. is so powerful because we, no man mm -hmm. takes the calling of God to himself. He must be called by God, mm -hmm. not called by the Baptist or, or, the organization, not called by the Catholic organization, not called by the, uh, the Church of God organization, but he must be called by God. God. Amen. Amen. That, that means he, you know, he better have a, that means he's gonna have a relationship with God. Yes, because no one can come to the Son unless the Father Draws draw him in the first place. Mm -hmm. See, it can't be enticing things or what you think. Because sometimes you know we're looking at sometimes people think that without understanding the whole thing, they are looking at some things that look enticing. Because sometimes today it look like uh, sometimes pastors and positions look like these are celebrities. But I can I can assure you, um, going to going being called by God to be sent to God's people, it ain't nothing. It, 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 it has nothing to do with being no celebrity. We, but we're gonna see that it has nothing to do with being a celebrity. It has to be you better. That's why we, we you you need to make sure you count the cost, and you make, we we need to make sure that you are called by God, mm -hmm. because when you are called by God, you're called by the one who can cause you to profit, amen, to gain, to increase, amen. And like how it says that. As a great high priest, mm -hmm. he has compassion on those who have gone astray or who are ignorant because he himself is a man subject to like weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And it's a beauty that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you know, God himself in the flesh is also able to empathize with us in our weaknesses because he took on the form of a man where he was subject to the weaknesses that we've experienced in our flesh. And he was tempted on every side, just as we were or are, yet he is without sin. And so God can have compassion and empathy on us because he can feel what we feel because he's lived a human life. So that, I think that's like a beautiful thing. Yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is powerful. To have a God that can relate to you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Verse five. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he... God, the father who said to him, you are my son and today I have begotten you. Understand the seed. 
Amen. Amen. Understand the seed. So also Christ glorified not himself. If Christ didn't glorify himself, then no man who is called by God should be seeking any glory for himself also. If Christ didn't glorify himself, amen, but he was ordained by God, his, and, and ordained by God, and thou art my son, mm -hmm. today I have begotten thee. In other words, he knows the father established him mm -hmm. and all glory goes to the father. So no man of God should be putting himself in a position to glorify himself, but glorify the one who has called him. Amen. 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 All glory. You know, when I look at the apostles, they, they didn't seek any self glory. They didn't seek it. When the people even tried to exalt them to glorify them, they rented their clothes. Mm -hmm. Amen. And said, but we are men with life passion just yeah. as you. You know what I'm saying? As a servant, as my job, I, I come not to preach myself, but to preach Christ Jesus. Amen. And myself as a servant. And as a servant, I, I, I remember in the scripture, he says, you know, should the servant go in the house and expect the master to serve him mm -hmm. and eat? And it, of course not, he shouldn't, you know, but the servant should know he's doing what he was called to do. Amen. Mm -hmm. You're doing what you're supposed to do. And, I, and, it's, and it, there is a reward. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. That God, because we know when God has called us, he's not calling us because we see earlier, uh, Jesus was that lamb without spot or blemish, but we were with spot or blemish. And yet in Christ, we were made clean. In Christ, you know, I, I wrote something and I said, Christ is bleaching. Christ is the word of God is the bleach in the urn. Why? Because it, it's the bleach that takes out our spots in the urn that earns out our wrinkles that make us that makes our garment white as snow and be able to present ourselves as glorious before the Father. Amen. But it's in Christ. Amen. It's in Christ. Amen. It's in that word. Amen. In that word. Amen. But I love that part where it says, Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest. In other words, he he didn't glorify, he didn't establish himself. God established him. That's why we can't, I can't seek no glory. You can't seek no glory. Why? Because it is God who established you. To go around talking about, yeah, I, I mean, you know, look at my degrees. Or look at, you know, look at, look at me, look at my gifts and talent. No, no, no. Glorify the one who trained you, equipped you, prepared you to walk. Give him the glory. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Continue in verse five. You are my son, and today I have begotten you. Mm -hmm. As he also says in another place, you are a priest forever, mm -hmm. according to the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. Now, I want y'all to get this, too. We have to understand this. He is a priest forever. Mm -hmm. There is no end to his reign. Amen. We got to understand that. Amen. See, every other priest that was made, there became another high priest that took his place and every year they made sacrifice mm -hmm. every year for the sin but they don't have because Christ Jesus after the order of Matilda, they're in his, his in his ministry in his ministry he um he there is no end to his ministry to his priesthood he is the head then and he is the head now he is who I labor in Amen. Amen. He is who I follow. Amen. Amen. He is he is the head of the church. I am not the head of the church. He is the head of the church. Because the Bible says that the head of man is Christ. The only way I can work for him, I must what? I must be willing to sacrifice my head and accept his head as leadership. Amen. Amen. He is the leader. He is look, that's why I love the song, Order My Steps in Your Word. He's the one that's ordering my steps. I don't tell God what to do. I, oh, y'all better hear what I say. It's too, it seems like there's too much going on that seems like men of God or people are telling God what to do. No, God, the Bible says, I am led by the Spirit. Amen. For the same Spirit that raised the price is now leading me. And that Spirit that's leading me, which is the Holy Ghost, brings all things into remembrance of Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 It's the Spirit of truth. It is the Spirit that has my spirit crying out, Abba. I'm a son, just like he a son. Remember I say, remember the seed. Mm -hmm. He said earlier, he said, thou art my, he said, thou art my son. And today, the father said to him, when he declared over Jesus Christ, said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Understand the seed and you will see what he came to produce. Mm -hmm. See, every seed must produce after its own kind. The father is establishing the seed so we can understand when we receive the seed, what he's producing in, in us. John's, John 1 says, 
uh, in the chapter, um, in the book of John, he says he came among his own, but they received the seed not. But for those who received the seed, gave him the right, gave him the right to make us sons. sons. Mm -hmm. So though, that's why I said that in, in, in a time, there's a rising of the sons. Amen. No, not a rising of the Baptists, not a rising of the Catholics, not a rising of the Pentecostals. No, there's a rising of the sons because why? The spirit that's coming in, the spirit of Christ that abides in you has now you crying out, Abba. Amen. Connection, relationship. Father, come on. Now. <laughs> Connection, relationship, Father. And there's, you, are, you are an heir and joint heir. That's why you walk with authority and power. Amen. 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 Hmm. Continuing in verse 7. Mm -hmm. Who in the days of his flesh, mm -hmm. when he had offered up prayers and supplications mm -hmm. with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him. Mm -hmm. Come death. on. And was heard because of his godly fear. Now, y'all got to hear this. We got to hear this. They're talking about the son. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you all to look at this because when it comes to application, the, the, the word is telling us that Jesus offered up strong crying and tears. Amen. While he was in his flesh. There's a battle with the flesh in the spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm not, Jesus' spirit was, the son of God was good with it, but he was in the flesh. See, Showing that, as, as, as Minister Dave Vaughn said, he was tempted on every side. He knew, he felt, he know what you're going through. So while he was in the flesh, he was able to feel what we feel here. This, and he sought, the, he sought the Father, the one who was able to deliver him from death itself. Letting you know, now what's in the spirit, the son, he, God, not my will, but thy will be done. But in his flesh, his flesh was mm -hmm. about to move. He was, he was about to take his flesh to a place of greater love. Amen. See, yeah. in greater love, your flesh can't go where greater love will take you. Because the Bible said there's no greater love than one who would lay down his life. See, he was about to begin to lay down the flesh on the cross. And the flesh don't like being laid down. Oh, y'all got to get this. Remember now we're talking about application. And when you move to a place of application, you're going to find yourself in a place where, where you're going to have to grow in greater love. Now, in greater love, you're going to have to begin to, when you allow the world to order your steps, where it's going to take you, your flesh can't go. Your flesh has to go on the cross. Deny yourself. Pick up your words. Pick up your cross and follow him. And if you're going to follow him, you're going to be baptized into his death. Mm -hmm. Amen. Meaning you're going to have to put your flesh to death. And when we put our flesh to death, we're able to walk in the spirit. And those who are led by the spirit are the sons of God. That's why he told the man on the cross this day. He didn't say three days later when I raised this flesh up. He said this day you should join me in paradise because guess what? I'm about to give up this flesh. I'm about to let it die with all the sins of the world up on it and I'm about to go into paradise. I'm about to step into the spiritual realm. Amen? Amen. And in the spirit, and he told the man on the right, he said, you shall join me. Otherwise, let you know, we're going to leave this flesh. They're going to bury this flesh, but we're going into the spiritual realm where we're going to be in paradise. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Letting you know that there is a spiritual place. There is a promise in my father. There is a place beyond the flesh. There is a place beyond your blackness. There is a place beyond your whiteness. There is a place beyond what you are dressed in. And it's paradise. Amen. Amen. In that, but he's telling them, he's saying, you know, but, the, but, it, but I, got, I, want us to, I want us to see today that there is a struggle, my God. There is a struggle um, when we are with our flesh in our spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. And there is a struggle in, in, a, in a time in, in, in when we are seeking his face. And the reason we have to also seek his face, because during this struggle, what's going on that's causing you to rise is going to be the very same thing that's going to be persecuting you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And in other words, because of the sin of the people, wickedness is all. Uh, hell is enlarged itself. Wickedness is abound. But where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Mm -hmm. 
the favor of God. But the favor of God is given to his sons who are, who, are, who, are, who are being called, his sons and daughters who are called to rise up in a time such as this. Mm -hmm. Who are called to see, man, light is being lost. So I got to sound the trumpet. I got to let my light shine. I got to be the salt. Why? Because I, on my watch, I don't want no one being lost without hearing or knowing about the good news. So I have to move to application. It's time out for me just wanting to go to church and sitting and hearing God prophesy what I'm going to get all day long. Oh, God. I got this one. running with itchy ears who have preachers after their own who after their own heart who will preach who will prophesy things concerning what they want, what they gonna get, what they gonna get instead of seeing what's going on. Oh my God, my God. What because the children of God can see what's going on, and when they see what's going on, they see the necessity for them to begin to declare the good news of the God who has about the power to save and to deliver and to transform. The God who wants to deliver and save and transform those who are lost, and they have that good news inside them, and it's not based on what they're driving, it's not based on them being mad. It's not based on anything of this world. It's based on the gift that was given to them by the Son of, by, by the Son of God. Amen. 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 So we see Jesus struggling. We see Jesus in the flesh battling with the will of God in the spirit. We see him in the Bible. Say he, he sought God with tears and he sought God with anguish in his flesh to the one who came. And listen, he, but he knew. I'm going to tell you, there are times. Let me help you out. Let me help you and me out. During this process, they're going to be suffering and during the time that you are suffering because you are standing on the word of God. And we might be crying and we might be bad, but God did not remove, oh my God, he did not remove him from that situation because within the, because what he was about to pay the price, oh my God, a price that was going to save life. Amen. Amen. Um, the Apostle Paul said something similar when he said that, he had a thorn in his side mm -hmm. and he prayed and asked the father three times to take that thorn away from him. But the father says that his in his weakness, you know, God's strength is perfected for when Paul is weak, you know, God is made strong. And so we see here that Jesus also is going through a suffering time where he's asking the father to deliver him from this cross that he has to get on. But as we see in like the next verse, we understand why Come God did not take that thorn or that, that suffering away from him. It says that with vehement cries and tears, he cried out to the one who was able to save him from death. Mm -hmm. And he was heard because when we have a fear and a reverence for God and yeah. we're obeying him and keeping his God listens to, to us. He hears our prayers. It doesn't go unnoticed. Um, However, it says, though he was, verse 8, yet he learned obedience by the things which he had to suffer. So sometimes God will allow you to go. Oh, say, man. God, deliver me from this situation. Take this thorn away from me. You know, take me out of this job. Take me out of this. God, deliver me. And God says, I'm going to keep you in that. I want you to learn through the things that you have to suffer. If he just takes us out of <clears throat> every temptation, every struggle, every circumstance that we face, how will he teach our hands to fight and our fingers to war? How will he mm -hmm. um, equip us and train us to be soldiers of Christ if we run away or ask him to deliver us from every war that we have to face? God says that I want you to stay in the middle of this, but I'm going to give you the grace to endure and I'm going to um, equip you and when you're weak, I'm going to be strong through you. I'm going to use this situation that you're going through to birth obedience in you. Uh, something that I always um, recall you saying is like when one is struggling with like with lust and you say, OK, God, like just take all the beautiful men out of the world. Take all the beautiful women out of the world so I don't have to struggle with lust anymore. But God is like, I'm not going to take all the beautiful, attractive people out of the world. You have to learn obedience and you have to learn self-control. That's the only way that you'll be able to overcome is if you uh, allow this to birth self-control and obedience in you. Amen. You know what? I'm, I, man, this thing bless <laughs> I want y'all, we, we want y'all to catch this. He says, though he were a son. Mm -hmm. And the father hears his son. son he, yeah. he, uh, the father hears his son crying, but as a son, mm -hmm. 
he he learned obedience mm -hmm. by the things which he suffered. Mm -hmm. Listen, that means the rising of the suns. There are place there. Are, there is a there is a there are times as sons. I'm not talking about see religious people. I'm not talking about no. I'm talking about to the sons and daughters. There are times that you're going to suffer. In other words, God may take you on a journey. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what came to my mind. But I'm, mm -hmm. I, I remember being in a church. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, I remember being in a church and I'm just being transparent, just being honest. And, you know, we knew what we were going through and this and that. And, 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 and God um, said, I'm, then he said, uh, was on a journey. You know, can you place where you know where you're going to have the authority as a, as a made by God when you have the authority to make decisions on you know what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. And you know, you, you love that, you know what I'm saying? And you know I'm going to shut that down and I'm going to send you and I'm gonna have you submit under another authority where you not they say you can do this, you can do this, if they say you can do that, you're gonna now, and you now have to submit to under other uh, another authority, even though you're still one who walk in authority. And you go there and you have to submit to this and you submit to that. And you know, and they say you can't do this, you can't do that. And it's all God. Now, what's interesting about it, and God takes you and see what happens in this situation and these things that when you don't have your own and you may go through, you know, you, you think about God. The body, Jesus said, um, boxes have whole Birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking there are those who are following the Son of God, and yet they had houses, and they had, and they're following the one, that, but in following him, it didn't look appealing. Mm -hmm. Amen? And we see sometimes when it came to the apostles, when they did, the, some of them liked following him when he was doing miracles. Mm -hmm. Some of them liked following him when he was casting out devils and he gave them power. Mm -hmm. But when he would say something in the word, my God, my God, when he would say, when he said, drink of my blood, eat of my flesh, they said, this is a hard thing. And when they said it was a hard thing, and I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm testifying about this in my life right now. I've seen this. When it gets hard for people to understand what God is doing at that moment, even though they know they you know it's funny how people begin to question if God ordains you or if God is with you when things get hard. When but 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 we know the song says order my steps. So God is ordering my steps, and and it's funny how you believe that God has ordered you to a certain place until things get hard. You know, God ordered you while you were walking a certain journey. You you were testifying about God gave you a wife. And you were testifying about how God gave you a husband. You were testifying about how God gave you a job. But when they get hard, you know, my God, my God. I, I remember when the church that God sent us to on New Year's, the man of God, and, and he was prophesying this and prophesying. And, I, and, and what he was saying, it was on point. I, I hope and pray it was on point in, in that, that year. But when I came in that New Year's, it was interesting because at that church, uh, as I was going to that church, I'm sorry, as I was going to that church, um, that new year, going into the new year, I pulled into the parking lot and my car get hit. Mm -hmm. I haven't been in an accident in years. I don't even remember the time I've been. No, I don't know if I've ever been in an accident before. My car get hit entering into the new year. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they, and they, and guess what? Not only did it get hit, it got hit and it was my fault. So. As a son, oh my God, I'm I'm going through something that 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 now I mean, and I could be like, oh my God, my car has gotten hit. Now there, people are being prophesied that they're going to get this, and God is going to do that and do that for them. But I see myself suffering pain at that year. I see myself uh, getting hit with aggravation at year. So when I'm there, the man of God calls me up, and I thank God he, he was coming up. He called me up to speak, and when I came up to speak, I said. After you receive all these things, my God, my God, when it gets hard, will you still praise him? When it gets hard, will you still give him glory? When it gets to a place where 
Can you still be obedient to the word that's leading you when you can't see where you're going? When things seem difficult, can you still obey the man of God that God sent you to, though you might not understand everything? Come on, my God, my God. You might not understand why God ain't got him going to do this. You might not understand, but can you move with obedience? Because why? See, Jesus was told what to do by his father. And the point now he's coming to a place where he has to obey the father, which is going to cause him great pain, going to cause him, guess what? Not only is it going to cause him great pain, but people are going to look at him like a murderer, his reputation going to be, I mean, it's, it, he's not going to look pretty. And I remember going through this situation as we are from our church being trans, we didn't look you might not look pretty and you might not, but you're obeying what God has told you to do. And it's so interesting. Consecration. After we left the place at the church that God said, he sent us to a hotel and he sent us to the ninth floor. My God, my God. A birth. To something, you know what I'm saying? The ninth month, bringing life forward. But see, it's going to be brought Y'all better hear what I just said. True life can only be brought forth in obedience. When you don't be obedient, you abort the baby, you abort life. When you stop obeying the word, when you stop allowing the word to order your steps, you abort life because you're going in a different, different, different direction of life. See, the word takes you to a place of life. When you stop following the word, you're now moving in a place of death. That's called abortion. You abort the word when you move. And thank God that God's mercy will try to, God's mercy is the place of life that you can bring forth life. And it's so amazing. So I think about, and I saw, and, and, and in this season, in this season, I have seen so many people, my God, abort life. They don't think they have, but they have, because God said, and God, and he spoke this word to me, he said, son, my people are not loyal. And I didn't understand what he said, but it took, and I, now I'm getting more understanding as, because it takes, see, Jesus had to show that he was loyal. Mm -hmm. See, he had to show that, but see, loyalty came at the place where he had to be obedient, and that obedience was going to cause him to lose himself for somebody else. Mm -hmm. To obey a word, to obey the word where you lose all who you are to please who God is. Lou, you might have, God may cause you to go to a situation where you may have to lose your dreams and you may have to lose your desires and you may have to lose what you want. And guess what? God may put you in a situation where you have to exalt what somebody else wants, where you have to do something for someone, where you may have to lift them up and in lifting them up, you have to lose the things that you think you want. Hmm. Mm -mm. Could you imagine if in, 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 in our marriages and relationships, if we had that mentality that you lose the things that you want? Could you, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have people committing adultery if we understood true love. Why? Because when you met her, you would move and deny what you want. So God can be glorified. To be able to sacrifice Made. And you learn it as obedience. And the Bible says as a son, he had to learn obedience through his suffering. That means you as learning as to be, to be sons and daughters. For those who are rising up, you are going through a season where you have to learn obedience through your suffering. And what does that mean? Can you stay on the word that God gave you? Can you do what God told you to do? Yes, I heard, you know, it's funny, I heard a young man, I was talking to this young lady and she was talking about this guy and she was wondering if he was going to be her man or something, right? And the guy, he, she said, when her to want to know God, he inspired her to want to know God. And she said, but then, you know what, now, uh, then he, he leads her to the bed like a that number one, he moves out of out of the pathway of life. And then the second thing, what he does is he is angry and don't really want to talk to her because why? He wants to be an actor. And as an actor, because of COVID-19, he's not able to do the things he wants to do. So now he's what we see religion.
sons serve God because they desire to please him. And to please him, to please God, you must be obedient to his word. Obedience, even if that word takes you to a place where you feel dry. Even if that, place, that word takes you to a place where you feel like you are lacking the things you want. Even when that word takes you to a place where people despise you and reject you. Even if that word takes you to a place where people don't want to talk to you and abandon you. Can you be obedient to the word of God as a son or a daughter if the word is ordering your steps to a place where your mama don't want to talk to you no more, where your daddy don't want to talk to you no more, where people don't want to hang out with you no more, where people reject and despise you. Can you obey God even to the end of the depth of your flesh? He wants to know, can you be loyal? Can you follow? Because you can't lead nobody unless you can follow. And God will connect you with people that you have to follow that may, that lead you in a way to try your heart. You think it's about them, but he's trying your heart. You know, it's funny. People like to say, people like to say, God sent me here. God sent me the one body or God sent me over here, Daniel, or God sent me here and sent me there. It's amazing how many people talk about God sent them somewhere, but as soon as suffering comes in, as soon as the word gets hard, and when I say the word gets hard, it means your application. What application? Maybe to forgive. Maybe there's a situation you have to forgive somebody because you don't like the way they spoke to you. Maybe you don't like the way they came at you. And it's an opportunity for you to exercise the word in you. It's an it's an opportunity for you to show the glory of God in you by dying to your... Because some people are like, well, you're not going to talk to me that way. You're not going to try me that way. In other words, so you can't be tried like Jesus was tried. Who are you that you can't be tried like Jesus can, like Jesus was tried? If you won't follow him, then you got to pick up your cross and deny yourself. How you going to exalt yourself? Because even if you feel like you were right, wasn't Jesus right? And yet he opened not his mouth. And he carried out what his father designed for him to do, regardless that it led him to be humiliated to be spit upon, to be slapped. So we got a church today, you ain't gonna slap me. We have a church today, or you're not gonna talk about me. Or you ain't gonna say nothing for me from the pulpit. You're not gonna, you're not gonna try me. We got a church, and yet God will sin. And I don't know, so if God sent you there, did he not know how he was going to prune your vine? If he sent you to the place, did he not know how he was gonna prune your vine? Did he not know he was going to take you on a journey to begin to show you things pertaining to you? Mm. But Jesus is obedient as a son. I'm talking to the sons and daughters now because I need you to understand. See, I don't have, this is a prophetic word. This is the word I want to release to you because I know they release it to this word. I know you're hearing words like you're not going to have to go through anything else after this. And you're not going to have, oh, no. To reign with him is to suffer. But the suffering is not worthy to compare to the glory. What glory? Christ in you. What's Christ in you? Who has made you a son and a daughter. Who has called you to walk with power and authority. Can he try your heart? I like, he, said, he, he was a son. He said, as a son, you can't get no closer in the family. But he learned obedience through his suffering. He said, he, he learned, I'm going to do what God say if you ride with me or not. You know, Jesus on that night, on that day, he had three apostles with him. Mm -hmm. All right? Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. While he's in the garden, crying and trying, fighting in, in prayer, mm -hmm. he goes and he talks to his boys who've been hanging out with him for three years. All he asked them was, can you pray with me? <laughs> for one hour. Sometimes I'm like, man, in this situation that you go through, man, I wish somebody would pray with me. Everybody got an opinion, but who praying with you? Everybody want to assume they know what's going on, but who's fasting for you? Who's, who, 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 who knows God is with you? 
But that, but that's 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 but that's not all one that but then he had to understand this. He had to understand that that was his battle. But you know, the only problem with his battle was because they went to sleep, they were unconscious. He said, watch and pray. See, people who are not watching and praying in the things that God doing, they're unconscious, unaware of what God is doing in this time and this season. And when you find it, when, when you find yourself being confronted with what God is taking you through, they leave, they three things happen. Ten of them, it was twelve, right? Mm -hmm. Ten just leave you hanging. People are gonna leave you hanging through the time of God developing you and trying your obedience in your heart. People will leave you hanging. One portrayed him. One will usher you into that place. Where see where you stand on that word of God. And one denied you. Mean act like they don't even know you. Well, I found that out in ministry. People that you poured into, they have no problem walking and act like they don't even know you. But it's not about them. It's about can you obey and continue to do what God say though you go through this process. Can you still love them when they don't want to talk to you no more? See, so this real. This, this right application, you got to understand it. You're going to apply the word and you're going to walk in the season and the time that we're in now. You must understand this. You must understand this suffering is going to come. But suffering is not because you don't get the... Su you're not suffering because you didn't get the car you wanted. You're not suffering because you're not married. That's not the kind of suffering he's talking about. This kind of suffering is kind of suffering when you're standing for righteousness and holiness, when you're standing for the things that birth life, mm -hmm. not the things that get added on to you in life. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is our example. And he, the, uh, the, the, as a son, you're going to learn obedience through what you suffer. Because why is he, the father did not rescue him. Mm -hmm. The father did not rescue him from that situation. Because that situation was a part of the part of the plan to win souls. The father is not going to rescue you from a situation that's going to cause the father to cause the lost to get saved. He's not going to rescue you from that job where they're talking about you behind your back. Where they're slandering you. Where they, where they, where they haven't promoted you. He's not going to rescue you from... Why? Because in your death, in the way you behave... And be transformed in that situation. It's going to cause someone to see his glory. He's not going to rescue you from that family. That don't believe in you. And don't trust in you. And act funny about you. And, and just call you. Isn't that just. Isn't that just. Uh, uh, isn't that just. Uh, Joseph's son. Why? Because it's in your obedience to the word. That produces the fruit. That brings the glory to God. So you got, you're going to have those men of God, women of God, you're going to run to, and they're going to have these false prophetic words for you to take, to try to get you off, the, to try to tell you God's going to do this. No, 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 no. God is dealing with you. You're going on that cross. And God's going to be glorified while you're on that cross. Amen. Amen. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Verse 9. And having been perfected. Mm. Being what? And having been perfected. That word perfected had three meanings. Mm -hmm. Whole, complete, mature. Mm -hmm. Having been perfected, being whole, complete, mature. Being made whole, complete, and mature. So suffering, obedience, take through your suffering, you learn obedience, right? Which will matures you, make you whole and complete. But see, through your obedience, through these times, we have to have a heart to examine ourselves. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I wrote this down, that we have to be willing to, as children of God, to under, to be able to examine yourself. To When I say examine yourself... Examine yourself in the faith. Amen? Amen? Examine yourself in the faith. Be able to, while you're going through, when you're going through this, um, 
when, when you and I are going through this persecution, when we're going through this process, can we examine ourselves in the faith? What does that mean? Mean to see if we're lined up with God's obedience, what the word says. We have to grow up. Amen. Amen. We have it is suffering is a learning and learning. To, uh, he learned obedience through his suffering, meaning he was being made mature through the suffering is a process of you growing up. Because why? The Bible says this as a babe desiring the sincere milk of the word of God that he may grow. The word that you have to grow is going to be tried. It is not strange the trials come to try your faith. You're going to try that word. Why? To see if you'll obey that word in a time of suffering. Can you be obedient in a time of suffering? Can you be loyal in a time of suffering? Can you do what the Father say? Because if you're Jesus, I always do. The word says I always do those things that please the Father. So doing his suffering, he had to do what pleased the Father by being obedient to the word. My God. So can we be obedient to the word of God during our time of suffering? Can we do what God, or do we, uh, uh, um, or we just quit, give up, walk away, stop, uh, 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 allow our flesh and allow our feelings to take us off the direction of your process of growing, being made whole, complete, and being made mature? You know, uh, it made me think about it. In, in, in Corinthians 13, it says, when I was a child, hold up, I want to... Um, Go there for a minute. Corinthians 13. Just want to read it. He says, when I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I put away childish things. So I want to be, he says, he was perfected as a son. Perfected means he was being made mature through his suffering, showing that he would, that no matter, death itself couldn't stop him from pleasing his father. Death itself couldn't stop him from obeying his father. Death himself couldn't, death itself couldn't stop him from loving his father. He was going to obey God, his father, no matter what came at him, no matter who came at him. We had a time that, we obey God until a man come in your direction. We obey God until a woman come in your direction. We obey, we obey God until a financial situation come in your situation. Or until you want to do something. Until opportunities come to please you. So now what pleases us, our way what God told you to do. And then we want to turn around and told like God's schizophrenic. He changing his mind every time. God's schizophrenic. Isn't it funny that God is, he's only schizophrenic when you start suffering and you don't like what he's taking you through. Hmm. See, God's growing up process is not going to change. He said to reign with him is to suffer. But the suffering is there to try your faith. Mm -hmm. Will you obey him when you can't get what you want? When it's not going in the way you want it to go. Mm. You know what's so funny? I, I, I saw a young lady. I know a young lady. Um, she was just getting on fire with God. All of a sudden she get a guy. She sees a guy. She get engaged. God already showed me she fell already. See, why is it important to be locked in, to be obedient to God? All the way up to be made mature. Why is it important to be made mature? And your maturity in God is going to be tested in your obedience. Let's keep reading. You'll see. And having been perfected, he mm. became the author of eternal salvation mm. to all who obey him. So he became the author of eternal salvation to life. Mm -hmm. Giving life to everyone who he became one who had the power now to give life to all who obey him, mm -hmm. because he obeyed to the place where he was now trusted. God now moves to him to give life mm -hmm. to all those who obey. No, we got to get that. You say what? Obey who? Obey him. him. Jesus said, "If you love me, you will do what I say." He said, "Obey for all those who obey the word." Mm. Mm. Kind of reminds me of like Second Corinthians, um, I think chapter ten, verse um, six, where it says that 
Um, be ready to avenge all disobedience once your obedience is made complete. Mm -hmm. So Jesus has the preeminence or he's first in all things. He was mm -hmm. the first to be fully obedient mm -hmm. to the word and to the will of God. Yeah. And now that he has suffered and learned obedience through his suffering, now he can help teach us how to learn obedience through our suffering. And he will provide eternal life to us when we do. Amen. And that we have an opportunity to introduce others to that mm -hmm. eternal life in mm -hmm. Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, that's why if you listen to the song, Order My Steps, Lord, I need you to guide me and direct me. Lead me down that pathway. Why? Wow. So others can find the way home. Mm -hmm. Find their way. When I'm obedient to your word, others have an opportunity to find their way to life. When I'm obedient to my desire of the flesh, they find their way to death. God, order my steps. Go ahead, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Mm -hmm. Called by God as a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. I mean, no any to his priesthood. Go ahead. Go ahead. Of whom we have much to say mm -hmm. and hard to explain mm -hmm. since you have become dull of hearing. He said, he, ta he talking to you, but we don't became dull. Mm -hmm. He said, we are dull of hearing. We're not hearing what the gospel was all about. We have become dull in our ears of hearing what he came for. Mm -hmm. We have changed the gospel to what he came for was about all about us, but the Bible says because he was perfected and he came, he became the author of eternal life. So if he became the author of eternal life and he is the author and the finisher of our faith, then we should be moving in a manner to offer life to a world that is dying. Mm -hmm. But we're offering stuff to a world. And even though the scripture says life does not consist in the abundance of things that we possess, yet we're offering things to people that have no life in it. I see people today, let me tell you, there are some things that are very good for you, but there is no life in them. Don't get me wrong. It's good to exercise. It's good to exercise, but bodily exercise, body exercise, all the exercise you do is not going to birth life. You can get a six pack. You're not going to birth life. About it. It's good to make money. Have money, but money Life does not consist, it is not, life is not in money. It is good to have degrees. It is good to be married, but there is no life. It's in the acceptance of Jesus Christ, the word of God, the seed. He said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. When people try to shift the word of God as if there is life, that life in you pertaining to other things, that's false doctrine. You being a millionaire doesn't bring any life to you. And they are dying, 100,000, 105,000, 100,000 people that have died. That is in many different facets. Like that's that's broad. It's, there are white people who have died. There are black people who have died. There are women who have died. There are there are uh, uh, there are black women, white women who have died. There are children who have died. In other words, there are many who have lost their life. But while we sounding the trumpet in the time where death is increasing itself, those who have the power of life. Well, if you is, if Christ is the author and the finisher of your faith, the Bible just said he's the author of eternal salvation. So he has birthed in you to know where, where, uh, where eternal salvation abides. He has given you the revelation of where eternal salvation abides. So how do we hold this secret inside? Why? Man, salvation should be ringing from the mountaintop to the valley. Especially where death is where, where death is flowing, flowing, flowing. We need to be saying salvation. I know one who, who holds the key to eternal salvation, to eternal life. Mm -hmm. But he said they have dull ears. They, they're not interested in eternal life. We're not interested in eternal life. We're interested into the things that benefit us. We're interested in our five-step business plan. We're interested in the things that make us look good. And the things we make, and we don't like suffering to obtain the things. And we think we're suffering. This, this is a part that's amazing. And we think that we are suffering to get the things we want. 
that, that ain't funny right there. So we now are suffering. You are suffering to get what you want. And what you want ain't going to bring life to nobody. You suffering to be that great actress. It's good. Don't worry. You, you saying, I'm going through. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I can't be this great actor. You becoming a great actress. Oh, I'm not going to bring light to nobody. I'm not saying it's bad. But but how are you, how you sitting there talking about you going through because you haven't made it yet as an actress. And yet, you are, if you are a child of God, you have the key to life itself. Verse 12, for though by this time you ought to become teachers, you need someone to teach you. He said, you, uh, come on, come on, man. He said, you've been in church long, am I right, come on, you've been in church long enough to be teaching somebody. You running back, you, you've been in church 10 years, you can't, you ain't teaching. No. He said, you've been there long enough to be teachers, but yet you got to run all over, you run everywhere to get a word, because why? You can't teach nobody, you need to be taught all over again. You've been sitting, he's, it's right, he's, he's saying, for when, for the time you ought to be teachers. You've been, you've been sitting under my word all this long, you ought to be a teacher. Teaching someone about what? Eternal life. Mm -hmm. Teaching them about the good news, the gift of eternal life. Hmm. Okay. You need someone to teach you again. Yeah. <laughs> Where you going in? He said, you need somebody to teach you again because you don't forget, you don't forget. We have forgotten what the good news was all about. Mm. We've forgotten what the gospel was all about. You remember, remember, remember what I said too, right? For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. Mm. But the word preached did not profit them, mm -hmm. not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Yeah. In other words, they heard the good news, but they didn't, they didn't want to apply it because it wasn't. Mm -hmm. They were dull of hearing. They were dull of hearing. Yeah. They were, and what made them dull of hearing <clears throat> is because you're busy hearing you. Guys are sounding much louder than what God is saying. God, I'm, 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 a, I'm a claim. I'm a name and a claim it. God says, deny yourself, pick up a cross. You said, no, name and a claim it. So you can't hear God because you're too busy trying to name and claim everything that's going to fulfill your desires and your flesh, which ain't got no life in it. God telling you, take this job that's going to pay you where the money ain't nowhere where you will pay, but you can't hear God because all you're thinking about, man, you know what? I need to prosper. I need to gain this and that. You can't, we can't hear God because it's too much of us in the way. And when God put us in situations, we won't examine ourselves according to the what God wants. Well, the that means just because you're not feeling it, that don't mean to stop doing it and watch the reward. Cross. But he obeyed the Father. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you need someone to teach you again. The first. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. He said, you know. I got a. That has gone back to milk. Babies. Mm -hmm. Children. When I was a child, I thought as a child. Mm -hmm. We boasting on men. Children, I can't give you meat because you so caught up in the messenger that you can't see what the word where the word is taking you. Paul was in prison. He said, though I be bound, the word is not bound. He said, Don't get caught in don't get caught up in looking at me, for the word is free and, and still have the, the word has the power to transform and deliver. But we so caught up in messenger. People, oh my God, this man about the word. What about glorifying God? What about a desire to, you know what's funny? God, I have so many people, he said people are running over there to hear a word, running over here to hear a word, because they ain't got no word in them. 
He said, the reason they got to run these false prophets all over the way, because if they had word in them, a lamp unto their feet and a light to their path. But they're always running because they're looking why? They're looking for some man, they're looking for someone to say something that they want to hear. And many of them that are running here and there and running and sitting there and sitting there and being entertained all day, they don't never want to, they don't want to read the Bible. They won't read themselves. They won't study themselves. They just something that appeals to their flesh. Oh, I speak the truth. It's the truth. I know what God has shown me. It's the truth. They have itchy ears. They don't want to hear sound doctrine. And the only time, many of them, the only time they pick up their Bible, why? It's on Sunday morning or Saturday. Matter of fact, Satan got them so cool. Let me tell you what the Lord, Satan got them so cool. They think they're doing a whole lot for God, but they don't even read the ticket of the Bible, take up his yoke and learn of him. They like Martha, want to do a whole lot for God, but won't choose that which is good and everlasting. They're doing a whole lot for the church, and men are pleased by what they're doing, but God says, I don't know them. But there's a rising. Mm -hmm. There's a rising of the sons or daughter of God. Who going to be obedient. Who going to, even when they suffer, they going to stay and do. And, 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 and they're going to operate in the word of God. They going to finish the race. But see these milk. And let me talk about this application. He said they own milk. I can't give them no meat. But keep reading. You have come. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Mm. Unskilled in the word of righteousness. You know, I did a thing called Help Me. Remember I was talking about Help Me? Mm -hmm. I did a thing on Help Me. And and when I and I when I talked about the helpmate, I talked about the woman and how she's a blessing. And there was something God had me say when I did the thing on help me. No one go get no one go get someone to help them that's not skillful enough to finish the task. If I'm in trouble, if I'm in a situation and I need help, I'm going to go get someone that's going to help me complete the task. So they're going to be they're going to have to be highly skillful in what I need help for mm -hmm. because they're going to, I, I'm going to need their assistance. That's how that's how awesome a woman is. That's what God God was. That's why he got God gave a, a man a helpmate. Why? She ain't she ain't she ain't, ain't about her flesh and all that. She is highly skillful in helping you complete the task that God has designed you for. She's not your slave. She's not some do -good. She is highly skillful to help you because you don't need a helpmate. You don't need someone to help you unless they are highly skillful. Now, I want you to understand that we see that with man and woman. Now, let's look at that spiritual. Christ is the groom and we are the bride. To help Christ, you need to be highly skillful. That's good. When God brings you in, he has to take you through a process to help you. Because if Christ wants to help you, you shall do what I've done and even greater things. See, religion does not want you to be highly skilled because they don't care about they just want to use what you they just want to use your gifts to help promote themselves. To be highly skilled in that which in which God designed you to do. Why? Because how can you help? And, and to be highly <clears throat> just like a woman God gave her as a helpmate and he watch this he gave her that title before she before he even took her to man he made her he he wanted her to be known as one who is highly skilled mm. to what Help you complete the task that God designed man to complete. So we who are the bride, we have 
always complete the task that the father sent him for. Mm -hmm. But to be highly skilled, you have to be whole, complete, and mature. So that means you have to go through the process of being tried, mm -hmm. being tested, to make you highly skilled. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? To finish what? What Christ was doing, not what you want. To finish what Christ came for. To What is that? To give light, to offer light, to be a light, to give to bring them to eternal life. That's the gift. That's why we rejoice. That's why we celebrate. That's why he, that's, let me give an example. They told him when they came back celebrating, remember when they came, when, when the apostles came back celebrating about casting out demons and, and laying hands on the sick, she said, hold up. That ain't where your joy ought to be. That ain't what you ought to celebrate about. He said, if you're going to celebrate, Celebrate about what I came for. Celebrate that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. If you're going to celebrate, all that stuff is good. But if you're going to celebrate, if you're going to worship, the good news is because what is doing all that stuff if your name is not written in? Mm -hmm. celebrate, what, celebrate what I am the author for. Celebrate what I came to do. To give you eternal life. If you don't get the husband or wife, celebrate that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you don't get to travel all around the world, celebrate that your name is written in the Lamb's Book Why? That's what he suffered for. That's what he was persecuted for. That's what he died for. What? That your name be written in eternal life. And yet, we don't want to teach that. We want to teach stuff that appeals to their flesh. A form and a fashion of God is denying the power thereof. We want to teach the stuff that don't bring true transformation. But God is raising up his son. He said, I got to get you off the milk. Amen. Because Amen. see, milk, you can't discern what's righteous. That's why even Christian, you got certain people who call themselves Christians. Well, I don't know if abortion is right or not right. You can't discern what's righteousness. Well, I don't know if same-sex marriages should be, you can't discern what's righteous. Mm. Well, I don't know if lying, you can't discern what is righteous. Why? You're dull of hearing. Because the word is righteous. Because the Bible said he took on our sins that we may take up on his righteousness. righteousness. We watch movies and can't discern if that's righteous. We go out with men and women and play with flesh and can't discern if that's righteous or not. We speak behind people back and we speak against authority. We don't understand if that's righteous or not. But God said, I don't care because you're a baby. And babies can't discern. A baby will play with book, a, a, a baby will play with his own mess. Mm -hmm. A baby will eat candy and discern what is righteous or not. A baby and he's saying those on milk, those who keep you stay at you on one place. God is trying to raise the church up, but you own milk because you got new dollar earring because all you hear is about all you care about is what you want. And when suffering come, you can't stand. There's a there's a falling away going on. It, there is a falling away from the there is a falling away from the kingdom right now. It's crazy. There are people falling away, don't even know they don't fell away. They so far away from what the word has called them to be and what the word has called them to do, they are no longer allowing the word to order their steps, they order their steps. And when they don't like something, they order another direction. When something don't feel right, they order another direction. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, say it's time. Sons and daughters, it's time for what? Solid food. Some solid food. So we eat some solid food today. We're going to eat some solid food today. Go ahead. 
Solid food belongs to those who are of full age. Mm -hmm. that they is. have matured. Mm -hmm. Those who, who are matured in Christ. Not those who run around talking about, oh, Apollo, uh, Apostle, I mean, Apollo, uh, Apollos is my, who I follow. No, Peter, Paul is who I follow. No, who are going around claiming men who they follow instead of saying who has, who has saved them and who delivered them, God himself. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying don't give honor to the men and women of God, but understand that they are merely servants. Christ is on the throne. Oh my God, Christ is on the throne. I'm not the head, Christ is on the throne. And he is very much alive. Amen. And he is the head of this church. Okay. Amen. Solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who are by reason of use have their senses exercised. Mm. Do, do what? They have their senses exercised. exercised. Come on, they got some training. They got some exercise. They got the, they, 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 they done been through the obedience. Mm -hmm. They done been through the suffering. They done, they, they've been perfect. They've been trained by God. They're being, pro they're profiting in the word. Their senses have been exercised to be able to what? To discern both good and evil. They can discern the difference between good and evil. Right and wrong. Right and wrong. Mm -hmm. That's what the words say, right? Yeah. <laughs> they can discern the difference between good and evil. He said, I got some babies. Can't discern what's the, what is God doing? They too busy. They're caught up. Hey, come on. You know you can't. If you can discern the difference between good and evil, you can't hate Donald Trump. You know that's not what the word says. You can't even speak against him ill and, and, and speak and you can't. Defy. You know you can't. That's not what the word. The word will not allow you to do that. But when you can't discern against good and evil, you think you can say anything you want out of your mouth. But the angels themselves didn't sit there and trash Satan. They didn't call Satan names. They didn't belittle Satan. The angels themselves didn't didn't didn't, 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 didn't hurdle did not hurdle uh accusations against Satan. They just simply said, Satan, the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. Mm -hmm. They didn't sit there and call him names and belittle and trap. No. And even with Nebuchadnezzar, the, mm -hmm. the Hebrew boys call him O King Nebuchadnezzar, honoring the title that he operated in, although he was not a, a righteous man of God. But then you have some Americans who say, you know, Trump is not my president. Mm -hmm. How are you mm -hmm. gonna say Trump is not your president if God? How are you? How are you? I'm talking he's to the Christians. Yeah. How are you gonna say he's not your president if God established him? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Trump ain't did what King Nebuchadnezzar did. King Nebuchadnezzar threw you in a fire, mm -hmm. and yet God said He established him, mm -hmm. and yet the men and women of God honored him as one who God established. Mm -hmm. You better know the purpose of what God is doing. If you understand the purpose, you'll be in alignment with the word. Even David honored Saul as mm -hmm. king. Mm -hmm. yeah. Though he treated him, you know, unfairly, he says, you know, I will not, you know, touch God's anointed or do his prophet no harm. He still honored the position, even yeah. though the man in the mm -hmm. position wasn't operating how he should be. Yeah. He still honored the position. Yeah. Read the sweet verse six. I mean, read the first verse. Chapter six. Yeah. Hebrew chapter six, verse one. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, mm -hmm. let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works of faith towards God. You know, he, let, me, let me just say, he's saying, come on, let's grow up. Mm -hmm. Let's, come on, let's grow up. If you're in Christ, it's time to grow up, church. Mm -hmm. It's time for us to mature. It's time for us to be able to discern the difference between good and evil. Amen. Amen. It's time for us. And we, 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 you, 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 you got your, we go into church, we turn around, every time we turn around, somebody repenting for the same old thing, going over the same thing over and over again. Come on, it's time to grow up. The Christ head has power to give you victory. The Bible, we, at, we, the word of God says, through your time of temptation, come boldly before the throne room of grace and mercy. Your time of need. Come on. 
We got to go boldly before God and say, God, give me the strength I need to conquer this. Let me examine myself. Let me examine myself in the faith. In the areas I see, let me bring them to God. Let me come boldly before God and, and trust God to give me the strength of what I need to. And if God, whatever God's doing in this situation, let me continue to pursue after him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because the true power of God is the power of transformation. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Transformation. Transformation means you don't remain the same. If the hey, if the if, 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 if the vine don't bear, if the branch don't bear no fruit, he cast the branch off. God expects us to profit. The word is supposed to profit in us. Amen. The word should profit to the hearer. The word should be profiting to me. And he that word should that word means it should cause you to increase and grow, transform, be more like him. Because that's the seed, because that's the problem. What is the what is Jesus fulfilling? What is the seed fulfilling? He's fulfilling Genesis. What in Genesis? Let us create man in our image after our likeness. Jesus is the image of God. And when we accept him, he's fulfilling the scriptures in Genesis. Therefore, bringing glory to God in us. Amen. Amen. My God. <laughs> Not God. I wrote this down. I wrote down, oh, obeying the word. Do we learn to obey by the things we suffer and putting these and putting our flesh to death? Can we put our flesh to death? You know, people, we, we, we don't made up stuff like this. We don't put stuff, falsify stuff, stuff like this in the church. Well, I'm only human. Mm -hmm. What? You might be only human. But the power that worketh in you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have gotten to the place where we're going to say, well, I'm not going to say what I wouldn't do. Well, why wouldn't you? If your power is in your confession. Amen. Mm -hmm. If our power is in our confession, we're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. If it's in your testimony, then you might want to start talking about I ain't sleeping with no. You can say, I'm not sleeping with no one until I get married. It's in your command. But see, when you say, well, I'm not going to say it because you never know. What you mean you never know? Fight the good fight of faith. Fight, say the word of God. Speak those things that are not as though they are. Man, in this mind, oh, I had to say it in my mind. In this mind, you're going to think thoughts of holiness. You're going to think pure thoughts. You're going to think that you're gonna, I'm going to meditate upon thy word day and night. Yeah, because the enemy constantly throwing darts at your mind. You got to capture those thoughts and bring them into the obedience of Christ Jesus. And as the man of God said earlier, be ready to revenge the disobedience with the fulfillment of obedience. Amen. Amen. You can do, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So don't say you can't turn the other cheek. You can do all things through Christ. Yes, you can hold your peace. When they reject you. We all, you know, we say stuff like this. Uh-uh, wait a minute, hold up. Hold up, you know, wait a minute. Now, if you talk about my mama, you can do, so you, you begin to tell the enemy doorways where he can capture you. Mm -hmm. You begin to, we begin to say things that sound good, but you don't know those things that you're saying are doorways because your God is able to deliver you from every situation. That's what Paul said. He delivered me out of, you know what Paul said? Mm -hmm. But for him to deliver Paul, Paul had to yield mm -hmm. to God's plan. Do you know Paul could have escaped, Paul could have escaped from the destiny God had for him. Matter of fact, they didn't even want Paul to go to Rome. But Paul said, I gotta fulfill, I gotta, he said what Jesus said, I gotta go do, I gotta be obedient. Mm -hmm. God, Paul could have not have went to Rome. They, they was crying like Paul, don't go to Rome. Paul said, I gotta go be yeah, obedient. Be killed if you go. Paul said, they say they you, mm -hmm. what he said, you're gonna be killed if you go. Yeah. Paul said, I gotta be obedient. Yeah. Tie up my hands. Mm -hmm. go. Yeah. But today we read. The words of eternal salvation in the word of God because he went. Mm -hmm. What are people going to read from your life? 
Will they read from your life your wish list or will they read from your life the word of God and how you obey him? Will they read how you glorified God in your, obey, in your obedience, even through your suffering? And I know people are going to try to take, man, God, I, I, man, I'm, I've been through all that. God ain't with you. God ain't with him because of this. God ain't with him because of that. God ain't with him because people try to take, God ain't with you because you ain't gotten, because your church this. God ain't with you because you got a building. God ain't with you because you don't have a building. God ain't with you. They don't, don't let people tell you if God with you or not. And stay true to what God has called you to do. It's false problem. God ain't with you if you don't have, if if you have a building. God ain't, if, if you have a building, God, God so God with you because you got a brick building. You know how many false brick buildings ain't preaching the gospel of God. Oh God, or if and then if if you don't have a building, God with you. No, neither one. God is with you. God is, do, keep doing what God has told you to do. And sometimes. The road that God is taking you on might not look like the road that he took somebody else on. That's okay. You just obey God. And keep preaching the good news of the coming of Jesus Christ. Church, sons and daughters, it's time to get off the milk. We got to get off the milk. He said, I'm going to make you meat for the master's use. We got to stop going back and being taught again because we won't go teach. We won't mature. Amen. 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 I'm going to pray. Father God, we thank you for this word today, God. May this word take root in the ears of the hearer. God, unplug our dull ears, God. Unplug our dull ears. Though we walk by faith and not by sight, we walk by hearing God, the word of God. And hearing we become doers, application of the word of God, that you may be glorified. Lord, I pray that every hearer, Father God, remove the dullness out of our ears that we may hear and be doers of your word, God, that we may mature, be made perfected in you, God. Even on the journey that you have taken us, O oh, gracious and glorious God. Let us rejoice that you are with us and that our names be written in the Lamb's book of life. Lord, we thank you and we give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you, salvation, Lord. Salvation, Lord. Lord, we pray, Father God, that another soul will not leave. God, we pray, come on. God, help us that let us stand up and rise up that not another soul will leave this earth without hearing the good news. Let us sound the trumpet, Father God, from the top of the mountain or in the valley. Let us tell, let us be like the woman at the well. Let me tell you about a man that told me everything about me. Sounding the trumpet. Come see him. Come see him for he has eternal life. He has living, he has living water. God wants to send some of us. He wants to send you out to, uh, he says, go publish it. Go publish it. Go publish it. Go send, go publish your life. Go show what God has done in you. Lord, everything that is unlike you, we rebuke it right now, Lord. Prepare us for, prepare us to be consecrated, God. Prepare us, O oh, gracious and glorious God, that our mind be upon you, God. Remove everything that would hinder us from flowing and doing those things that you have called us to do. Every spirit of lust, every spirit of perversion, every thought that does not line up with your word, God, cast it down. Give us the courage and the strength to cast it down and bring it into the obedience of your word, God. Lord, let us put this flesh on the cross that we may walk in the spirit. For those who are led by the spirit are the sons of God. We thank you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we hope you enjoyed the service. Again, if you haven't already, we ask for you to share the video to your page or um, subscribe to our channel, One Body in Christ and Love, so that you can um, know when the next service will be. If you would like to keep up to date with the ministry, um, you can do so by texting the number 25827. Texting OBICIL to the number 25827. 
And if you'd like to be a blessing financially to the ministry, um, I believe the information will be inserted in the chat box. But you can give through PayPal. You can pay through Cash App or through Zelle as well. Um, we bless you all and we pray that you will all exercise the fruit of obedience. Yes. And that we will mature, mm -hmm. that we will be able to discern mm -hmm. the difference between good and evil. 